What's good, y'all? My name is William Kata, and I'm here to tell y'all my testimony. I pray to God, and I hope that uh, it'll help a lot of y'all that may have went through what I went through, or even if you're dealing with faith issues and, and not really knowing if, if God is real, Jesus is real. So here we go. So um, basically, I'm going to take y'all back. This, this took place around September 2011. And uh, at the time, I was living in the projects in Queens at my Aunt Zelda and Uncle Kevin house. And um, bottom line, uh, you know, I had just went through a breakup with one of my ex-girlfriends. Um, and it wasn't too pleasant. I was, you know, I would say I was heartbroken over it. Um, and with that, that made me want to go. You know, I started to feel like I'm not where I want to be and all of these things. And I started to look at, you know, my cousin, um, he just had came home from doing jail time up north in New York. We'll get into that later. But um, he had books like, like, you know, he had these books, The Art of Seduction and 48 Laws of Power. So, you know, I, I started to be interested in that and, and wanted to read it and, you know, feel like, if I obtain a certain knowledge, I might be able to, you know, obtain a certain power. Which is, I wouldn't say it's good at all. It's actually uh, demonic. So any anytime you try to seek anything outside of the will of God, it's demonic. So, um... But of course, I, I wasn't thinking that way yet. I didn't think that it was wrong. And growing up, I was always told Jesus Christ, and I always believed in Jesus, but I, I didn't personally know him, know him. Like, I always knew God, but I didn't know him on the level I know him now. But you know God allows you to go in the mud in order to know that you need somebody to clean you off. So from there... Uh, I was reading The Art of Seduction and The 48 Laws of Power. My cousin had those books. And, um, you know, as I was reading it, 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 it really, uh, I will say this. I don't want to be too long. I want to get to the point. Uh, so with The Art of Seduction, it taught me how to, it taught me how to really seduce women and, and just people. You know what I'm saying? And, uh which was nothing like myself. Like, I was never a seducer, but we know Satan is a seducer and he seduces. So, um, but again, I'm still not thinking it's wrong. I still didn't even feel convicted yet. 48 Laws of Power taught me, you know, the rules that we, you kind of already learned growing up in the environment I come from, but it teaches you in a more, a swindle way, you know what I'm saying? And, I would say that uh, that book is very demonic within itself also. And with reading these books, um, of course, I'm the kind of person that when I obtain something that I think is good, I got to share it with everybody else. So I would start taking the books outside and showing all my friends. Mind you, I'm, I'm probably like, I want to say like 16 years old. I want to say like 16. So I go outside, you know, um, I was I was selling drugs at the time, nothing crazy. I was selling weed, you know. what I'm saying me and my me and my bros, um, which I won't say names, cause you know I, I just won't. I'm not gonna do that. But um, yeah, so I go outside and show them. But the the backfire what that did was, as time went on, it made me feel like I didn't know who to trust, cause I didn't know who was using the book against me. Although I wasn't using it against my peers as of yet, because I, I right at this phase I had control over you know my mind and we'll get into it. So from there I noticed that I would be able to basically I summoned a spirit in me that wasn't my spirit, but it was an evil spirit, and the spirit came from those books, and um, you know. Uh, I never forget one night, uh, really I say one day, you know, 48 Laws of Power teach you that you, you want to, uh, you don't want to, you, you want to dress different than any, than everybody to, to stand out. You know, that's why you see a lot of these celebrities, 
they put on the most weirdest stuff, but this is a way that, you know, they seduce the eye and they make, they, they stand out and, and that's another way for you to idolize them and just, it's a costume, like a, like a, a action figure or something, you know what I'm saying? So I started to dress differently than I would do in the norm and like I said, this, this, this evil spirit that I was able to summon was now everywhere with me and when I'm ready for him to be summoned, it's like, it's, it's something I would do with my eyes and look down and when I look back up, it's like I was me, but I, I was me 2.0 on the evil tip, you know what I'm saying? But again, in my heart, I didn't feel like, because my reasoning wasn't, the, the root of it wasn't satanic, so I didn't feel I was doing anything that was satanic, you know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, so boom, uh, I never forget one day I was outside in the projects and I happened to look down and I summoned it. And uh, I never forget, I ain't gonna say no names, but one of my big homies, like, like, like old head, he kind of got a whiff of what just happened, but he couldn't recollect in his mind, like, what just happened. But when I did it, the whole group of everybody, you know, they just followed me down the, down the, uh, the lane inside the project. You know, we call them lanes, like, you know, you could go through the lanes around the buildings. So... From there, you know, when I look back, he was looking at me, but he had that eye, like, like, something is weird about him right now. So, uh, you know, fast forward, uh, I remember one night, this is when it got real scary, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is when I knew it was going a little too far, but I didn't know yet. So, uh, bottom line, uh, and yeah, I was getting a kick out of it as well, because I never witnessed nothing like it, but again... You kind of out of bounds when you moving in that kind of stuff, cause I just flat out say that's that's if not borderline, that is witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? But again, I didn't do this to be satanic. I did it cause it's just like it's a self help book. You never know. You you know what I'm saying? Like anyway, back to the story. So I never forget I went to a party one night in the projects, and uh, this around those times. Um, and when I got upstairs, there's this girl that I that I kind of had a crush on or whatever, but I never had the guts to talk to her. Even though if I talked to her, I probably could have got her. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not to be boastful or none of that, but you know, you just never really go after the ones you want. Well, not at the time I did it. Now, you know, I'm about to get married, so I got the one I want. I need a love. Um, but yeah, so I never forget. I look at I looked at her. And when I looked at her, I blinked one time and I looked the other way. And that's all I needed to do. And like, I say less than 15 seconds later, when I looked to my right, she was standing right there. Bottom line, I knew that wasn't me, but that was the spirit that I had summoned. Let me make sure it's still recorded. All right, we still go. Hold on. So yeah, bottom line, I looked to my right and she was standing right there. And uh, from there... I just, like I said, I never forget everybody that I blinked and did that to. It's like I caught their attention and now they follow me. So, some people was able to pick up on it though, you know what I'm saying? Some people, when I tried it on, it's like it didn't work. And they'll be able to tell and look and be like, nah, something about him is off. And again, like I said, this is not me. Like, growing up, official, all of that, you know what I'm saying? All I had was what God implanted in me and, 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 and instilled in me. But around this time, you know, with my breakup, me not being where I want to be, I was doing secular rap at the time, although I was rubbing shoulders with a lot of celebrities, but I felt like, why I don't have what I want? You know what I'm saying? So I started seeking things outside of whatever God put for me. You know what I'm saying? And that's where you walk into danger. So... I never forget, I walk out the party to leave the party, and as soon as I leave the party, I go out the building, I look up at the window, project building window, I look at the window, everybody that I blinked at and turned my head, they all walked, I don't want to say ran out the party, but you could say borderline walk ran, they ran out the party, and I saw all of them looking at me through the window telling me to wait up. Of course, my heart started beating, I got scared because... I knew the reason why they was coming to follow me and tell me to wait. So it got to the point where I summoned something that I probably didn't fully know the extent of and, and, and had full control over. So 
As soon as I bent the corner, I turned the corner, I ran. And I was on the other side of the projects, but I ran through the lane and I ran to my building. So um, that was that for that night. Uh, I just didn't know what happened. Like I kind of got scared because I wasn't ready for that. I didn't know that was going to happen. So whatever. I, and I, I believe I said a prayer that night too, but on my way back to the house, uh, to, to my building. But, you know, next day passed, day two. I go outside, it's a, uh, it's a gloomy day. It looked like it's gonna rain, but it, it's not raining yet. This is the day where all hell break loose. This is the day where it stopped. So, I never forget, I walk down the lane, I see my bro, I see all my bros, you know what I'm saying? Um, everybody outside just talking, chilling, laughing. As a matter of fact, I will say this name. Uh, no, I ain't even gonna say the name, I ain't gonna say the name. So boom, I take headphones from one of my homies and I, I'm, you know, I'm listening to, 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 to music and it, it might have been my music at the time I plugged it into my phone or whatever. So from there, as I'm listening to music, it's one of the one of one of my bros out there. He like top dog crip. Like he he the head of all the crips, you know what I'm saying? Um He happened to be passing me by and again, you know, Ephesians 6 12 say we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers of darkness, principalities. So Whenever I mention seeing somebody and seeing evil spirits or whatever, this doesn't mean that I'm calling the person evil. This just means I got myself in something that I didn't know how to get myself out of. So, I also want to say, I can't forget this. With reading those books, I told you in the beginning of this, my cousin just got out of jail. My cousin couldn't smoke regular weed because he was on papers. So... He was smoking K2. Now, you know, some of y'all heard that just now. I was like, uh-oh. So, I didn't know at the time fully what it could do. I just knew all the old heads out there were smoking K2. Because they ain't, like, really smoking weed. And a lot of them was on papers. They was on parole. You know what I'm saying? So, my cousin, you know, me and him real close. So, he would tell me, yo. You know, everybody called me Pop. But, you know, he called me Willie. He called me Pop, too. But, you know, Willie. So he like, yo, Willie, yo, yo, come smoke with me, man. Da -da 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 -da. So I'm like, all right, cool, I'll smoke with you. I right, right, bet. Cool, I'll smoke with you. So K2, all you really got to hit is one time or two times, and you higher than if you smoke three blunts. You know what I'm saying? At the time when I first did it, it didn't take a toll on my mind yet. But I believe God knew what he was doing by allowing me to do that as I was reading those demonic books. All the seduction and 48 laws of power. All that did was intensify the spirit world that was already at hand and that was already trying to seduce me and deceive me. And it just opened the window for me to see everything. Fast forward now. So, uh, so now I'm listening in the headphones. Fast forward to the, I told you, day two. This is where it get crazy. So as I got the headphones on, I'm walking through the lane and I see the, you know, my bro, you know what I'm saying, uh, older guy, you know what I'm saying, head of, head of the Crips out there. But when I looked at him, he didn't see me, but I saw him walking past. When I looked at him, I saw an evil spirit inside of him that I felt like he didn't know was there, but it was there. And it was housed in, in, his, like, it was housed in his body. And... I felt some kind of hurt and sorrow for seeing that because I felt like this thing is in him and he don't know it's in him. And it was just a sad feeling. Like, to know somebody has an evil entity, whether that evil entity is going to do whatever, but it's in them and they don't notice. And they might not know why they feel, how they feel sometimes or whatever, but I seen it. So from there, I took the headphones off, turned back around. Gave the headphones to, to who it belonged to, one of my bros. And I walked off with my right hand man, my bro. We were selling weed together and all of that. I said, yo, let me holler at you. So he was like, yeah, yeah, it was good, cuz. So as we walking, I looked at him and I was just like, yo, I don't know what's wrong with me, bro. Like, uh, hold on. Let me see if we still recording. Yes, we are. All right, so I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me, bro, but... 
I'm seeing things that I don't think I'm supposed to be seeing. So, you know, he kind of looked at me and was like, yo. And by the time he looked at me, I had tears coming down. And I said, yo, bro, I'm telling you, I don't know what's wrong or what happened, but I'm seeing things that I'm not supposed to be seeing. So, uh, he, you know, he looked at me like, yo, you good, cuz? I'm like, I'm good. I just don't know what's going on. So I told him, walk me to my building. So now we in front of my building. Dun, dun, dun. This is where it start. It get crazy. So we get in front of the building. By the time we get in front of the building, we just chilling. They got the scaffolds up, you know, scaffolds is around, and we just chilling. So as we chilling, uh, um, a lady, we chilling, talking, laughing, whatever. I'm about to go upstairs because I'm just like, I ain't feeling it today. So, mine was probably like three in, the, three in the afternoon, two o'clock. It's not that late in the day. The lady walks by with all white on, but some, some parts of her garment was black. She walks by us, so we stand and then she walks in front of us towards the left. When she walks by us, she looks at me and she says, Oh, you, you remind me of my husband from so and so years ago. I think she said like 30 something years ago. But you know, when you look at somebody in the eye and you talk, you either gonna look at the they left eye or they right eye. Some people try to be professional and look you in your nose. But this lady looked at both of my eyes back and forth very fast while she talked. It wasn't what she said, but it's whoever was in her that said it. And when they said it, all the hairs on my body stood up from my feet to my forehead. If I got hairs on my forehead, everything stood up. So kind of like when you scare a cat or a cat sees something real scary, how, how the whole body just do this. So I kind of looked at her as she walking. Mind you, spiritual warfare is real. And not everything God allows you to see, everybody around you is going to see, all partaking. So, you know, my man next to me, he just, you know, he regular. And I kind of looked at her. And when she walked, she walked to the, to the end of the lane and just stood there. No purpose, no nothing. Stood there and met a gentleman. Her and the gentleman was just standing over there. Now, I want to say this. A lot of times you'll notice when there's, there's evil spirits... Like the spirit of the devil and demons, it's very antsy. It's very, I don't know why I'm here. I don't have a purpose. Uh, you know, it's just very antsy. Like they, they're just there. So God is a God of purpose at that. You know what I'm saying? So when I looked, she was standing with the gentleman. And mind you, they older. They probably like in their 50s. So I looked and, and God instilled in me, not for nothing, I can't just let that happen and not test the spirit and see what's what. Mind you, I was not reading my Bible at the time. I didn't know the Bible like I know it now. You know what I'm saying? I, I, my stepdad always told me, though, you know, uh, he always taught me about Jesus. From the time I was in the Bronx, my brother got murdered, to after, till now. You know what I'm saying? Always taught me about Jesus. But a lot of times we read our Bible because as young kids... Cause we want to make our parents proud or they told us to read we like oh you know i read this i didn't know the bible so i looked at the dude and I, he had a ring on a birthstone so i just wanted to make conversation so i said uh that's a nice ring you got on right there man like we was a little distance but basically i'm i'm talking to them so i just wanted to make convo because i need to know now who was behind this spirit that just made all of this just happen in the curve so He's antsy. He, he does like this and looks and goes, oh, 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 this? Yeah, yeah, that's my birthstone. So I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a nice ring. So the lady says, you got a father named Kevin, don't you? I don't got a father named Kevin. I got an uncle named Kevin. That's, that's who I was living with at the time in the project. So I said, uh, I wanted to make combo. So I didn't say no. I said, yeah. But mind you, God has his commandments set up. Yes, we are saved by Grace through faith, I believe it is. Faith through grace, grace through faith. I don't know verbatim, but we're saved not by any works, lest any man should boast. But God still has his commandments. And whenever you break those laws and don't repent and ask for forgiveness, you now give the devil legal rights to come tarnish you and come do what he, what he may if God allows it. You know what I'm saying? So bottom line is 
You can't be out here. It's like the real court of law. You know what I'm saying? If I go murder somebody, legally they have rights to come get me. If I go steal from somebody, legally they got rights to come and get me. You know what I'm saying? So um, from there, I told her, yeah, I got a father named Kevin. So when I said that, by that time, me and, me and my bro was walking back in the projects. But mind you, this is what the devil do. This is why you should never move in fear. Because when you move in fear, you're not thinking how God will have you to think. I just told him, walk me to my building. But by the time we, me and her start having this convo, it had me walking back towards the projects. This is probably what the devil wanted. All his demons, because the devil can't be more than one place at one time. He's not omnipresent, so omniscient, none of that. So uh, I noticed it. But when I said, yeah, I got a father named Kevin, she walked towards me. I got a little shook. I ain't going to lie. So when I did that, I noticed that I lied to her. I knew I lied. And when I said that, I made it right. And I said, oh, no, I'm just playing. I got an uncle named Kevin. When I made it right, she stopped in her footsteps and walked backwards to where she was standing already. And was like, oh, oh, you funny. Mind you, demons know that. As long as you abide by God's rules and his commands, it's not much they could do with you. You have to consent by breaking God's laws in order for them to really have their way with you. Unless it's like a Job situation where God allowed that, but in the end, Job got doubled in, than what he had before. You know what I'm saying? So from there, I'm like, yo, this is crazy. This is wicked. So I tell my bro, I say, yo, walk me to my, walk me to my door. So he walks me in the building. Now tears is coming down my eyes because like I know now. It's like I knew something was, 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 was around me, but I didn't know until I knew. So it's kind of like God didn't allow all of this to take place so full-fledged yet because I didn't know. But it's like once you know they there, they going to knock at the door. You know what I'm saying? So he walked me upstairs. I pull out my money. You know, I handed him some bread because, you know, we, we might got to re-up soon. And I'm just like, yo, bro, take this. I don't know how long I'm going to be not out, not going to be outside. But he was like, yo, you good, cuz? I'm like, I'm good, bro. Love you, bro. Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to the crib. So he like, I right, bet. Yo, hold your head. He left. Soon as he leaves, I go inside the apartment. When I go in the apartment, I see my little cousin on the couch. But mind you, the door is like behind the wall. I come from around the wall, and as soon as I come around the wall, he's already looking me dead smack in my eyes. It's not even like he had to look and find my eyes. He already dead smack in my eyes. And I said, uh, uh, you know, I said, what's up? And the way he said it to me was like, hi, Pop. But how he said it was like it wasn't him. It was that spirit. So I'm like, oh, I'm about to lose it because I thought I just left this spirit outside, but obviously it followed me in the house. So now, I'm not the type to back down. Now that I see that, I ask him, yo, you want to go outside and ride your bike? You want to ride your bike? He was like, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, get your bike. We're about to go outside. I went right back outside. Now, when I go outside, it's a gloomy day. Move. It's my dog. I go outside. I walk through the lane. I walk through the lane to go on the main avenue on, on Broadway. I'm walking through the lane, and there's, a, there's an Asian guy way ahead of me, but it's just me, him, my little cousin going through the lane. As I'm walking, this man literally stops in his steps. Looked back at me and turned back around and kept walking. It's almost like he felt the negative, I don't like to say energy because that's that new age talk. But he felt the negative spirits around me so much that he turned around. He was way ahead of me, stopped walking, turned around, turned back forward, kept walking. Mind you, this is where it get crazy. I walked to Broadway on the main avenue. So, you know how, like, I don't know if y'all saw Rihanna video, Disturbia, or, like, when they have people heads turning, but it looks, like, slowed and fast. Like, kind of like sometimes people will use it, like, in music video effects. I've used it a couple times, but not to the effect where it looks demonic. 
I'm on Broadway. And as I look up and I look at everybody walking, you know, just living life. Everybody I looked at, their heads kept turning and spinning like that. And they, they chin would go over their they right shoulder, their left shoulder. I never forget when I seen that, I prayed. Not like, but I, I spoke to God within under my breath. And all I, I can remember myself saying was, oh my gosh. I said, Father, I don't know what I did to, to, to get here. How did I get here? I, I don't understand how did I get here. From there, I take my little cousin back upstairs because now I know it's real. So, and I also knew that I was the only one seeing this. Nobody else was. And this is why I asked God, how did I get here? Because that just don't happen unless you, you walked somewhere in the spirit that you had no, 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 you had no business being. So when I go upstairs, first person I call, cause he the one who, who gave me Christ, you know what I'm saying? You know, thank God for my stepdad, my, my dad. Um, so, uh, I call him and I say, uh, if, if anybody, y'all live in a project, you know the, the project flaws is hard. It's like polished concrete. So I call him and I'm, I'm crying, I'm yelling, I'm, I'm, I'm beating on it, I'm punching the floor. I'm like, you gotta get me out of here. It's, it's demons, they after me. Like, they, they after me, I don't know what to do. You gotta get me out of New York now. So he's calm. He's always calm. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, I right, just, just, just calm down. L let me, let me see, you know, let, let me see book a flight or something. I'm like, I right, cool. Get off the phone. I, you know what I'm saying? I get off the phone. Now I'm so weak in my spirit because I don't know what's going on and I just don't have the energy no more. I go in the room to go sit down. Now, mind you, by this time, my aunt is home, my little cousin home. People's home. My mom's ain't home yet, but she's on her way from work. I'm sitting in the room so weak, and I know God knew that I was weak. He knows everything, of course. Before anybody would come in the room, how I would know somebody's gonna come in the room is because I would feel, let me see if we still recording. <laughs> okay, so. How I would know if anybody would come in the room is because I would feel like this force just run. Run into me, but I don't feel it all around. I feel it in the middle of me. Like if there was a spirit to keep me uplifted. So my aunt would come, come try to talk to me or whatever. This, how I knew somebody was coming in the room, I feel the force run into me, right in the middle of me. I feel the force. It's like something God gives me a piece of him so I could be alive enough to hold the conversation. But this is how I knew because you never know who the devil can lurk in or, or demons can lurk in. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't make the person evil. You know what I'm saying? I love my family to death. But the spirits that's operating around me right now, nothing can be trusted. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't even about a trust thing. It's just I'm not in a, in a place right now where I could fend for myself. So, you know, she'll come in, say whatever, but I see the same spirit in her. Uh, my cousin will come in, I see the spirit in him. Uh, my uncle, I see it. The only person God didn't allow that spirit to be in and, and strike me now from lying was my mom's. And it has nothing to do with her being righteous or none of that. You know what I'm saying? He just knew that that was the comfort I was going to need for the time being. You know what I'm saying? He's God. He could do what he wanted to do. So my mom came home. You know, she's speaking to me. We talking. And I never forget around these times, I felt this sense of I needed to get back right with God. So I never even forget my mom was with a gentleman at the time. And I didn't kind of like how he was treating her. But I never forget he ended up calling the house, I think, looking for my mom's. And I got on the phone and I made sure I made it my business to tell him, yo, I forgive you if you did anything wrong. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, basically, I was just feeling real like I had to make everything right with God. I felt like if I was mad at somebody, even if they didn't know, I had to let them know I forgave them. I loved them. 
because it, it, it made me feel like any moment you, you could be dead right now and you might not be with God. So I wanted God to see and know like I'm really of you. You know what I'm saying? All the shenanigans, I'm dead. Uh, camera got cut off. But basically, yeah, so I just wanted everybody to know like, you know, I wanted God to know, not everybody, but God to know that I love him and I don't know how I got here, but I'm willing to do whatever to get out of this kind of spiritual warfare. I was lost. So, uh, yeah, like I said, that night, uh, I never forget, my mom's came home. And when she came home, uh, uh, basically, I didn't see that spirit in her. Everybody that came to the, to the, uh, to the, to the room to talk to me or whatever, joke or whatever, I wasn't in the, the place to be able to do that. So, you know, my mom's came home and that night, she answered every question. And mind you, we in a twin bed laying side by side. She got her arm around me. I'm like 16 years old and I was lost. And God put it in her, the spirit in her to really, I believe it was the Holy Spirit. And, and I'll be real. And every question I asked my mom through the night, probably all the way to the morning, she answered. But she was sleeping. You know what I mean? And it was like this voice that was just a regular. It was a voice with no emotions. Basically, like if, if God put a spirit in you just to do the actions of a human, but it has no bias emotions. It's crazy. So wake up next day, you know, I, my, my, my pops finally got me the, uh, the flight. So I got to wait until that day. And these past few days, um, you know, I started being mad, like, like I don't want to say mad, but like I didn't want to be in the crib no more. I didn't want to stay in the house. And I still didn't know what was going on. I would black out. I would uh, wake up 15 minutes later, look at my phone and realize I blacked out. I remember when everything went black. So I ended up going back outside. And now it's nighttime one night. I'm outside. And uh, I never forget I was with my bro, the same one who walked me to my building. And I shouldn't be outside because I'm not in my right mind because I really feel like I was in my right mind. I just wasn't in my right, in the right grounds where I should be spiritually, rather I say that. So when I walked outside, uh, I walked outside, i never forget his, his, a lady said, yoo She was calling him, it was his aunt. He heard his aunt calling him, but when I looked around, turned around real quick, cause it sounded like a demon was calling me. It was so crazy, it was weird. Um, I started to get angry, you know, not just at myself, but just at, at, at life at the moment, cause I didn't understand why I had to go through that. I knew why, but I didn't know why. So uh, fast forward, we get to the, we get to the airport. So my mom's take me to the airport. I say bye to everybody. Phase three. So so day two, phase two, if you want to call it, was the introduction of the repercussions of what happened of, from me reading those self-help books. I summoned something in me that wasn't of God. And he brought all his buddies around me. That, that was phase two. I got to see the obstacle at hand. Phase three, airport. The plane ride from hell. Me and my mom's on the way to the airport. By this time, we get there. It's like I see everywhere the devil is. And I say devil, but we give him too much power. But I see everywhere, if you want to say fallen angels or his squad, I see everywhere they are. And people, I see them. Me and my mom's got to drop off my luggage. You know, she only could go but so much to the, to the food court and all of that, but she can't go past to the gate. So we drop my luggage off, and I see a demon in this guy that's controlling the bags. Out the blue, of course, my mom's didn't see it. She saw the, the person at hand. She got mad, and they almost got into a little, you know, misunderstanding. It would have been foolish for me to get mad, because again, a 
Ephesians 6 12 was really playing out. I knew it wasn't the man, but my mom didn't know that. And this is why a lot of times when we go back and forth with people and we have misunderstandings, we got to be careful because you really don't know who's on the other side of that in the spirit realm going back and forth with you. And here you are holding grudges with people because you think it's the person, but it ain't the person. I could guarantee you that. So, you know, and I can't explain that to my mom. Ma, nah, it's a demon. You sound crazy talking like that. So, uh, you know, from there we walked to the food court. By the food court, uh, I go get lasagna. I go get my lasagna, I sit down. As I'm sitting down, I keep seeing the lady who served me the lasagna, she keep looking at me. When I look, she look away. I tell my mom, it's frustrating me, I'm getting mad. My mom's like, don't worry about it, so what? Just eat your food, like, it's, it's gonna be all right. But I knew it wasn't no regular look. I knew it was demons just messing with me. So, from there, my mom's, uh, you know, I kissed her goodbye, and I went through, mind you, I'm by myself now. Kissed her goodbye, I went through the security check and all that, went to the gate. Soon as I got through the gate, this is when all hell unleashed. I'm by myself now, mind you. So, when I get there, everybody and their moms that passed me, their pupils was bouncing in their socket. Looking at me, but bouncing around. Average person see that. I mean, we all, nobody's better than the other, but I'm just saying. The average person who's not inclined to that kind of spiritual stuff, I go ballistic. This is why you got people that... They'll kill their whole family and be like, I don't know, I, I saw the devil, I didn't mean to do it. And let me just say, I would never do nothing like that because I know the more and more I, I, uh, the more and more and God excels me and advances me, you're going to have people that play for the other side that try to do all kind of things, frame me, uh, uh, just whatever to get me out the picture. So y'all see it here right now, I'm telling y'all, that's not how I'm rocking, you know what I'm saying? Just in case they try to take this and whatever. So, boom, I go, you know, I'm getting angry, but something in me is like, you got to calm down because you do something crazy, they'll lock you up. That's it. You just the crazy kid that wilded out in the airport. Nobody's going to believe you. How much people say it was a demon or the devil? You got to cool out. You can't fight a spiritual war with your physical. So, I'm in a chair and I'm mad. I'm like, yo, 16 years old, I'm like, yo, that's my word. I, I, bet, bet. So now, I'm no longer, I felt like I'm not running from the devil. I'm going to chase you now. So I finally get by my, uh, my gate. Remember, God showed me. You want my help? All you got to do is call on Jesus and, and, and confess that he is the Savior. He's the, Jesus is Lord and Lord over your life and you shall be saved. But. You know, you can't just speak it. You got to really live that. You know what I mean? It ain't about good works, but you got to live that. So we saw when I lied and I said that my, 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 my father was Kevin, but it was my uncle. The demon tried to get closer. I said, I'm just playing. That's my uncle. The demon stopped and walked back. Cool. That was lesson one. Lesson two. I get to my gate. I see an open seat next to this, this man. I want to say he looks like he's Middle Eastern. Hold on, let me see if he's still recording. Still recording. So, I see the man. He looked like he's like a Middle Eastern guy. Like, like could even be Brazil or something, but I knew he was Indian. The seat is open next. That's the only seat open. In my mind, I wanted to sit down in that seat. I looked. As soon as I looked, he's sitting down. He took his fist. Well, this fist and put it inside the chair next to him and looked at me like on some like you not sitting down. I don't know how he knew I wanted to sit down, but he knew. Mind you, again, it's not the person that's at play. It is the spirit. Lesson number, what's this? Two. Uh, yeah, this is two. So I turn my head and I just think God, I think Christ, and I tell God I would like to sit down. And I patiently waited on God. I didn't get mad in my heart or nothing. I patiently waited. And as soon as I looked again, I saw it through my peripheral, but he moved his hand. And when I looked, he smiled. Like, like, I don't know how to smile like he did. That would be fake. But he smiled. And when he smiled, he put his hand like this, like, like, to sit down. 
That was lesson number two. Basically, God has the master keys to everything. I don't care who say what, who tell you this, who tell you that. If you ask God and it be his will and you go about it the right way and have the right attitude, God will open them doors. So, boom, something as little as a seat. Ain't no regular man or, or regular situation. He putting his fist inside the chair and looking at you crazy. You wait on God and talk to God and now he's smiling through like this. I don't care what nobody say. You can miss me with the BS. So, boom. I go sit down next to him. This guy is important, though, for this story. He's important. So, I go sit down. So, now I get back up because we got to get in line to get on a plane. Finally, we walk through the tunnel. I get on the plane. I sit down. When I sit down, I blinked one time. When I blinked, the, the, the pilot over the, uh, the loudspeaker, he started saying things that pilots don't usually say. So now I know for sure this is not really going on. But spiritually, something is, is egging me on. Like, so he's saying stuff like, oh, if we happen to, to, to the plane happen to drop out the sky and we fall by the water, there should be a rubber ducky under your seat. Playing, like, so... I knew when I heard it, I'm like, nah, like that ain't real, but all right, it is what it is. I'm not going to lash out. I'm smarter than that. So now I'm chasing the evil spirit because, like I said, I got to test the spirits. And the flight attendant was walking through the lane of the plane. So I didn't really want to buy nothing. I didn't want nothing. But in order to, 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 to know where the spirit is at, even though it's probably moving through whom it may I yelled out to the flight attendant, excuse me, uh, uh, I would like to buy a Sprite and I think some chips or something. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to talk to her to see like where this, where the demon at. So she said, we don't take cash. We take cards only, but you could give somebody the cash and get their card. Mind you. I said, all right, cool. There's a Spanish lady across from me on the other side of the lane. She's important to the story too. So I said, excuse me, you have, she was like, yeah, sure, papi, here, here, you can use my car, papa. I said, all right, cool, gave her the $5, gave the flight attendant the money because my thing came with the $5. The flight attendant did this. She didn't really hand it back to me, but y'all can say I'm reaching. I know I'm not reaching. She took the card and slid it on my lap, but the way she put it in my lap was on some, huh, put it in your pocket. So I said out loud to the lady, excuse me. People probably thought I was crazy, but I, I was talking to the demon. I wasn't talking to the lady. I said, excuse me, uh, why, would you, why would you put the card in my lap? This is her card. It's not my card. Like People probably thought I, they didn't catch on yet. So boom, I gave the card to the lady. Mind you, the plane takes off now. This is the plane, the the... This is the plane ride from hell, like, hell. We take off, mind you now, I was reading 48 Laws of Power, reading Art of Seduction, smoking K2 here and there with my cousin, doing what I wanted to do, seducing girls, just having my way in my flesh. God was walking me through everywhere and he held my hand, but he's still going to let you know what you did wasn't right. And mind you, a sinner's a sinner, but this ain't like no regular, I wasn't doing no regular, although I don't look at no sin as regular, but this wasn't like no regular, this, that, and the third. This was you dibbing and dabbing in some witchcraft kind of stuff and yeah you're doing it unknowingly but you should already know this is not of me you know what i mean let me see if we still record it all right boom so when the plane takes off we already high in the sky all i know is i look out the window and when i look out the window the plane is not moving not moving and outside my window is a big, black, dark, smoky, cluttered looking cloud. Black, not gray. A black cloud outside my window. Not nobody else's window, my window.
and it's lightning going through. So now I feel like this is God mad. He's showing me his anger. He's mad. And if you know a lot of times in the Bible when you read it, even when God spoke to Moses and different people, you know what I'm saying? Or he appeared to people. Sometimes he would appear in the cloud. Even the children of Israel, they couldn't, they didn't want to talk to God. At first they hit Moses with the, why you got to do it? Let us talk. Then when they spoke, they was like, nah, we fear that. We rather you do it. Come back, tell us what God said. So at the time I didn't know that though. I just knew it was a big black angry cloud. Yeah, I know you're like, how can a cloud be angry? This was an angry cloud letting me know only if you knew. I got scared. I got up. I went through the aisle. One by one, I went through the aisle. I started bugging. And I asked everybody. It's like I was no longer myself, but I was myself who I was supposed to be in God now. And I was going back and forth between the two. But when God calls you, he calls you. Not the you that you try to put on for the world, but he calls you. And you'll be foolish to ignore that. Turn the truth that you got into a lie and keep dwindling in what you want it to be. Got up, I walked through the aisle and I asked everybody one by one. You believe in God, right? You believe in God, right? You believe in God, right? No, I'm talking about it's about 50 rows. This is a big Airbus plane. Nobody answered me. Nobody. But one person answered me when I got to the, to the last row. And he shook my hand. And you know who it was? It was the man who didn't want to let me sit at first. However he knew I wanted to sit, I just looked and let me sit. It was him. He shook my hand and said, yeah. Finally, I get to the back of the plane. It's two flight attendants. One lady was like, sir, you got to sit down. The other lady looked like she was just there and she had no life in her. Like she was just a person with no life. Like she, like I, I can't explain it. So she's like, sir, you got to sit back down. I go back to the front of the uh, plane and now I'm looking at the front of the plane. Well, I'm in the front of the plane looking at the whole plane. Everybody's looking at me and I'm just like looking. I want to say after 20 seconds or so. And it's a lady next to me like, sir, you got to sit down. I got back into my regular pop, like pop from, from the block. I got back in that mind state. And that's when I was just like, oh, you bugging. I went back to my seat and I tried to slowly sit down and act like nothing happened. Because, again, I was switching through the motions. I was being who God called me to be. And you be bold in him and speak for him. And then switch back when you feel like, Oh, they look at me a certain way, but it wasn't even that. It was just I was literally going through the two. So I go and sit back down slowly and, you know, like I blink one time. And, and whoever made up life could change in the blink of an eye. I think that's a deeper meaning than we know. But I just like to stick to God's word. That's that. So as soon as I sit down, I blink one time. And when I blink... Everybody all at once start cursing me out. All the curses in the book you can think of. You dumb. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, he's an idiot. Going crazy. The Spanish lady who I said is important, she taps me. I'm crying. I remember my step, my, my pops told me to download the Bible on your phone and uh, read your Bible. I'm crying, boo-hooing. I look out the window, I see the cloud. I prayed to God as I'm crying and reading my Bible and I told God, please make it go away. Please make it go away. By this time, it's like nighttime. You know the flights when you take them, you can take it midday, it's daytime, but by the time you're about to land, it's nighttime. Mind you, I say flight from hell because I looked at my watch and the time was not changing. I don't care what nobody say, the time wasn't changing. So it made me feel like I was going to be on this plane for eternity. This is even though hell is not described like that. But you you talking to somebody who never really read the Bible at the time. So I knew God. I knew about Jesus. I knew the basics, but I didn't know. No. So I'm thinking all kind of things. And I'm like, yo, the time not changing. This has been a long flight so far. You could imagine going through all of that. 
So I'm in my mind, like I start thinking about my mom. I start thinking about my best friend, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my brother, I just start thinking about everybody who I held dear to me. And uh, I was just like, man, I don't know what I did to get here. I even remember myself talking to my brother that died and that's not even of God. But I was just like, dad, like, why you didn't tell me? Like, I could have avoided this. Like, this, this is wild. Like, I'm really, this is my death. I'm here forever. I'm going to be on this plane forever. Like, I'm never going to see the earth again. Like, I'm here with these people and this is my punishment for doing the things I did in my life. I'm punished forever to be on this plane and hear everybody going crazy on me and, and I'm never going to leave out the sky. So, uh, I sit down in my seat. I'm reading my Bible. As I'm reading, I feel my whole body vibrating. I pull a piece of, like, it was a little piece of hair in my mouth, but the hair was wiggling and it wasn't like a little hair. Like, the hair was probably like this big and it started wiggling in my mouth. I pulled it out of my mouth. I'm still praying, still reading. And I asked God to please take the cloud away from my, my window. And when I did that, I looked. The cloud was gone. I turned my head. I looked again to see if it was still gone. It was right back. That was lesson number three. Lesson number three is when you ask God for something and you really ask him in your heart, he'll do it. If it's of his will, he'll do it. He'll come to your aid. But the minute you try to doubt him, if he told you I'm going to do it and he showed you he did it, why would you turn your head and look again to see if it's still there? If you saw he made it go away, you got to walk by faith, not by what you see. And my faith wasn't where he needed it to be for it to still be gone. So out of love, God was spanking me and showing me you got to have faith in this walk. Don't ask me for something and I do it, but then you got to look and see, well, was that a coincidence? Am I really going crazy or is it God? That's a slap in the face. So the cloud was right back. So the lady tapped me and said, go to sleep. She said, it'll all be over soon. Whatever that meant. I go to sleep and I actually go to sleep. That's the crazy part. Um, I wake up now. Phase four. I wake up to a to a uh, like a sheriff captain kind of cop, big white dude with a with the with the cowboy hat. He's like he tapping me. Come on, buddy, wake up. Let's go, buddy. So, you know, grab your stuff. I grab my stuff from above. And I walk through the uh, I walk through the, the plane with him. Everybody's off the plane, mind you. Everybody's off the plane. I walk through the plane with him, and we get through the lane. You know, the lane to get to the gate. Soon as I get to the lane, an Indian cop grabs me by my collar. I see all his teeth, and he's not even real big, but he big enough. He throw me on the floor, and it's like he's like, ah. Mind you, again, we don't fight against flesh and blood. I knew that. These was these spirits coming for what they want. He threw me on the floor. He dragging me. Out of nowhere, I said, Father, please show me the way. When I said that, I had my eyes closed. So like right now, right now, if y'all close your eyes right now and you got light in your room or whatever, you can still see the light. Now, if you put your hand over your eyes, you see how it just got real, real black and dark? But I'm talking about darker than that. So I closed my eyes. I said, Father, please show me the way. Everything got real dark. And all I heard was chains, heavy chains. I hurried up and opened my eyes quick. I said, Father, please forgive me of all my sins. And then I said, Father, please show me the way. Closed my eyes when I said it. Everything got white like a bright light.
basically God was showing me. It's lessons in all of this too. God is showing me. You telling me to show you the way. And I'm going to rightfully show you the way. Because I'm the judge first. I'm the creator first. Then I'm your father if you accept Jesus Christ. You adopted in this family by him. So with all the sin that we do, all of us is hell bound. You need the free gift of Christ and salvation and God's grace in order to even get there with him. So I said, Father, show me the way. And it got dark and I heard chains. Little do you know, I don't read the, I, at the time I didn't read the Bible. So it talks about the abyss and all of that and, and demons being locked in chains and all of that. Whether that's for us or the demons, I heard the chains. So, uh, and basically he was saying if you ask for forgiveness, you repent or whatever. Not or whatever, but if you repent and then ask me to show you the way. That's when I'm going to step in and you're going to have life, not death. So uh, from there, I get outside. Um, once I get outside, I'm on the floor. They got me cuffed. I'm on the floor. I'm sitting down with my legs out like that and my, my, arm, behind my, uh, my arm behind my back. Now, I'm looking at life through a different scope. It's not what I always knew it to be. I feel like God lifted a veil and showed me, sat me down, showed me. This is what life really is. And unless you really get in line, it's over, brother. So, I, you know, I told, uh, I'm just talking to God and I'm letting him know, you know, I don't care about none of this. I don't care about the clothes. I don't care about the woman. I don't care about nothing. I just want to be with you. I don't care. And I do you one better to even prove more to him that I didn't care about this nasty flesh. I had to pee, but I didn't tell the officers I had to pee. I just ended up peeing on the ground and I rubbed my hands all in it. You may call me crazy, call it nasty. I wanted to show God I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to lay and doodle and show you it don't matter to me. I'm humble. I'm ready to come to you. I'm humble. And I thank God so much that he put me through that before I even read the Bible. Because when I read the Bible, it only confirmed everything I went through. So now, I've been told the cop, call my dad, call my dad, let him know. You know, I had to connect the flight. The flight was to go from, from New York to Florida, Fort Lauderdale, to Georgia. I only made it to Fort Lauderdale. I'm outside. And mind you, remember when I said what the life could change in the blink of an eye? It got to a point where... When I looked up now, the cops was, you know, they was all out there laughing with each other, talking, I guess waiting for the ambulance or whatever to come. I blink one time. I do this and look. Everything is quiet in front of me and all the cops is looking at me with the most evil look you could have. Just like. I blink one more time again. Everybody's talking, laughing. So I started to feel like. There was two paradigms on this earth. Like, you know how you can say there's hell on earth or you have heaven on earth. I don't believe it matches up to heaven or hell. But I do believe you reap what you sow. And the fact that I was in between, God was showing me oh, everything you did, you deserve this. But I still have this for you if you're willing to follow me. As you are showing me, you are willing to follow me. But you got to learn. This ain't over yet. You got to learn. So I blink once, everything is cool. I blink again, everybody just looking at me, ice drilling me, like, like they're, they're tearing me apart right now. So finally I get on the ambulance, they take me to the hospital. Mind you now, when I get to the hospital, they wheel me in the room. Of course I peed on myself, I'm not thinking about that. I just see a bunch of doctors, they, mind you, they handcuff me to the bed. I see a bunch of doctors and nurses walking in slowly, like 10 minutes after me being in there, they walking in slowly, putting their stuff on. Earthly mind, of course they're going to do that because they don't know what kind of risk you are or how crazy you are. But spiritually, it looked crazy. It, it, I felt like I died already. Like I died and they was coming to just, all right, my bad. So my camera had died on me. But so like I said, uh, the nurses was coming in, uh, putting their stuff on. I was handcuffed to the bed and... Uh, so basically, um, where was I at? They was putting their stuff on. Uh, I felt like I, I had died because I seen them. They, they had like a big Ziploc bag. 
Um, obviously, I peed on myself outside when I was in handcuffs before I got to the uh, to the hospital. So um, basically, about a good eight to ten of them walked in the room as the cops is there behind me. I'm cuffed to the bed and um, you know, slow motion looking at me crazy. So you know, I just felt everybody was demons. It was just crazy. Everybody looked like demons to me. Um, so. You know, when they grabbed up the Ziploc bag, they had a curtain they was wrapping around me. I felt like I died, and they was just coming to take my clothes off to get me ready to go wherever I got to go. So, um, of course, I start going crazy. I start yelling at them, don't touch me. Nah, get off me. When I did that, the cop that was behind me that was in charge of everything, he kind of put me in the headlock, and, like, he just looked at me. And when he looked at me and I looked in his eyes, it just looked like this real mad angry face that was more angry than a human could get but you know I, I, a lot of people look at God and they say God is uh you know God is loving he has mercy yes he has grace that he gives us and he gifts us with but God is also a wrathful God and when God says something and mean business he mean business so you know the dude kind of you know choked me up and when i looked him in his eyes like it was this real angry look and it was so angry that we don't even know each other like that for him to even be that kind of angry with me but i knew it was something deeper than that and he just looked and told me like i'm trying to help you stop like you know get it together so by then i calmed down and um you know I woke up in the morning not knowing because the flight I took was going from Georgia, no, from New York to Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale to, to, to Georgia, but I never made it to Georgia. So um, when I woke up, little did I know I had an aunt that lived in uh, in Fort Lauderdale. Let me make sure we still record it. <laughs> yeah, so I had an aunt that lived in Fort Lauderdale, my auntie Telly, and uh, really my stepdad's uh, aunt and... Uh, my aunt, so I woke up and she was there and you know, I was happy to see her and uh, it was a new day of course, so she said my dad was on the way um, and from there, uh, the doctors put me in like this little mini ambulance and, and took me to the, to the, I don't know what you, what you would call it, but like another form of hospital, but like a psych ward or something like that to evaluate me, I guess, because that wasn't normal behavior in their eyes and uh, you know, it's a place where people that may, you know, have suicidal problems or overdose or, you know, they have those kind of problems. So, in my heart of heart and mind of minds, I didn't feel I had any problem. I just felt like God was trying to talk to me. But when you tell people that in a world that don't believe in God, it never ends good. It ends good because it ends how God will have at the end. But, you know what I'm saying? So... I finally, I, I get there, you know, everything was cool. When I got there, there's a, there was a guy that worked there, and uh, he kind of was the only one that looked at me like everybody's been looking at me when I did that blink. He was the only one. And that same guy, when I ended up leaving there, didn't have that same look. Um, but I was in there for three days, so the first day was cool. They took me downstairs. I went to go eat. I met some people. From there, I, I did arts and crafts. We went to an arts and crafts class. Inside the class, now I saw a, a pile of Bibles, small Bibles. And, um, you know, I asked the lady there, I was like, do you mind if I take one of these? She was like, sure. Of course, God knew what was going to happen, that those was there, I feel like, purposely for me. And um, basically, I now wasn't picking up the Bible to read it for my parents or just read it to feel like I'm doing something good. I was really reading it now. Because I had questions that I needed answered. After everything I went through, I'm just like, I need to see what God say about this. What, what, what the Bible got to say about this. So, you know, I would take the book and I would read it at night. And it wasn't until I read the book that I realized everything I went through is, is a lot of the things that the Bible warns you about. A lot of things Jesus would say, I already felt in my heart. I just never read it and knew that he felt the same way but the only reason is because he ultimately is the creator you know what i'm saying so it's him that instills this in your heart you know what i'm saying those who have ears to hear let them hear those who have eyes to see let them see you know what i'm saying so uh 
from there, you know, my dad would come visit me. Um, and it came, my aunt Marcia came to visit me, uh, my, my cousin Raina. My uncle Warren, they came to see me as well. And it wasn't until the third day they evaluated me. The lady called me in the room to talk to me. And she was asking me questions, you know, here and there, you know, just about my life to see where my mind is at then. I do notice, I, I did notice as she's asking me questions, at the, on the ceiling there's a, there's a uh, water. Water kept dripping from the roof and hitting me directly on my forehead. It was crazy. And she asked me, did I believe in God? And I told her, yeah, and I said it boldly. So from there, they tried to tell my dad, but I already know and God gave me the feeling in my heart that I was going home on the third day. And um, I'm never ever comparing myself to Christ, but it was just bugged out to me because you know Christ rose on the third day and I felt like the transformation God made for me was, you know, within those three days. So um, from there, uh, you know, they told my dad, we're going to keep him longer, but I know God was telling me I was getting out of there. I wasn't staying there no longer than the three days. So, you know, I kind of teared up and tears fell down my face and I just told my, my pops, I was like, I don't understand. I did everything I was supposed to do. I spoke to God. I read my Bible. He told me I was leaving and I don't understand why they saying I got to stay. Literally, I'm in here talking to kids like I'm a therapist, like I didn't understand. But of course, a lot of times when God tell you something and you're very sure he told you, the enemy will play tricks on you. And that goes back to when I was on a plane and I told God to make the, the cloud go away. He did. And I looked again to see if it was gone and it was back again. So that's really a test of faith. And it's not God that's tempting you. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't tempt you because he, he can't be tempted. You know what I'm saying? But I do believe sometimes it could be a test of your faith. So I went inside the media room, I was watching TV, but you know, tears coming down my eyes and I just don't understand. I'm like, I want to just leave from here. You know, um, I'm better, I don't, you know, not that anything is wrong with me, but like, you know, I understand what it was and why I went through what I went through. And all I know is I looked and uh, I looked to the window and when I looked, one of the head, you know, ladies there, she looked through the window, looked at me with a smile and winked at me. Not all the time when you see winking, I don't really like winking because you know the devil winks and somewhere in the Bible it talks about, you know, you got to watch people that wink and they, they talk with their hands, but this was a different kind of wink and she smiled at me, but basically it was one of those like, it's going to be all right, you're getting up out of here today. So when she did that, you know, that, that was kind of confirmation for me that God was like, you leaving. Boom. They actually end up letting me go, get your stuff, you about to leave, you're going home, I'm happy. I leave from there, I go in the car with my pops, and uh, it's raining, of course, you know, so we get ready to go back to Georgia. Yeah, so we get ready to go back to Georgia, and on our way back, we in the car, it's like I couldn't listen to the same music no more that I used to listen to on my Blackberry, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had a Blackberry at the time, and it's like my whole world changed. I felt like... And I know there's people with hell experiences, so this probably can't even compare. But I just felt like, imagine being somewhere where you have the fear of God for like, imagine being there for a second and coming back here right now. Your whole train of thought is going to be different. So I couldn't even, I didn't even have the urge to listen to nothing that I felt was going to dim the Holy Spirit that he put in me and, and, and the power that he gave me to, to have the fear of him. I didn't want nothing tainting that. So... Anytime something would play and it, and it wasn't of God, my bad job. Anytime something would play and it wasn't of God, I feel that same, the, the same chills that I felt, but in a, it, it was more all over now instead of like just running to the middle of me. Like I said, when I was real weak in New York, I would feel this and I asked my pops like, how come I keep feeling like every now and then I feel these chills? And he was like, that's the Holy Spirit. So then, you know, we just going. And one thing I will say, life turned from hell on earth to now. Everywhere I went, 
I could utilize my faith. And of course, nowadays, like God has me somewhere else. And even after that, and I thank God for his grace and mercy, because even after that, like I said, I was 16 going on 17 and I, and I backslid it and I did things I had no business doing, but I knew where I was going in God. And not to say like that, because a lot of times we could be deceived and think we doing what God would have us to do and we doing the total opposite. But I will say before I backslid and, you know, went through some other things, I will say everywhere I went, it's like I had favor with everybody. It was different. Favor like I never had. Um, I never forget I was in my, my, my bro neighborhood and there used to be bats in there. So I never forget we got out the car. So I never forget we got out the car and uh, there was bats flying in the sky. And I overheard, you know, one of our homies was like, man, look, that's a bat. At the time, I mean, I don't like bats. I don't know who do like bats. But even being in tune with God like that, bats just seemed like the enemy. Like, and I never forget, I turned around and I just prayed. And I prayed with faith that the bats be gone. And one second after I said amen, one of them said, oh, they all gone now. Like, it was crazy. And in that area at night, if, and if you live in Georgia, in certain parts, there's, there's bats come out at night. One even flew in my house before. So, uh, yeah, that was an instance. Um, it was many instances. i never forget I was shooting a music video for him. And uh, there was a motorcycle inside the park. Dude had an all black. <laughs> Four-wheeler. And it bothered me for some reason. It bothered my spirit. I didn't like it. And i never forget, I thought, I thought, and, and, and I knew with faith. It's like it was a power God gave me to know. So yeah, basically, basically, it was a power God gave me where if I know it, it's going to come true. But it has to be of his will. You can't be like, I know this, this is going to happen, whatever, whatever. So I'm doing a video, I'm shooting a video for my friend. And I heard the motorcycle, I saw it, I had faith, and I said it had to leave. Like, like, I knew it had to leave. It bothered my spirit, it had to leave. Little do you know, the motorcycle noise got lower and lower, and I watched the guy leave out the neighborhood, not the neighborhood, he was in the park. So I'm still shooting a video. The minute that it was a little snare in my faith, it, it tainted a little, because instead of keep shooting a video for my friend, I thought about the motorcycle again. And who do you hear as soon as I think about the motorcycle? Ying, ying, from all the way back, back, back. You hear it getting closer and closer. It came back in the park. So I had to redo it again. And, you know, pray. Think about God. Think about Christ. And it was just a, a, a cool thing, man. And I will say, man, God can bring you from the lowest place to the highest place. But you must humble yourself. You know what I'm saying? Nowadays, you know... God gives me visions and he shows me, even when I'm doing wrong, God really shows me, like, you better get in line because just because you've seen all the things you've seen, I did that for you to go tell them and let them know that I'm real. But it don't mean you all the way good either, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I truly believe some people could be saved through somebody telling them about Christ and that person that told them don't even make it. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, you got to keep your faith in Christ and just know that he's real. You know what I mean? And I only did this video to point to Christ. So, y'all can have a relationship with Jesus. He's very real. Um, I didn't do this to boast about me. Just like Paul said, he knew a man. Um, he knew a man. That Pastor Pope was talking about this too when I was in Maryland. You know what I'm saying? My mentor. You know what I'm saying? Um, Paul knew a man who made it to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of body, you know, he don't know. But bottom line, Paul was saying that you got to beware of telling people your revelations like this because they'll think of you higher than they're supposed to think of you. When we are all merely just humans made from the dust. You know what I'm saying? We're going back to the dust. You know what I mean? So you always got to point it to Christ. Because where you're weak, 
it shows his strength. You know what I mean? And uh, bottom line is just, uh, yeah, with saying that, you know, also it says, you know, when you when you that boastful about yourself and, and, and the experiences with Christ, God will send you, will send a, 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 a demon or a messenger of Satan. I'm going to find it for you. I'm going to find it. Hold on. Hold up. I don't want to get it wrong. All right, so 2 Corinthians 12, 2. Uh, let me make sure. Yeah, so 2 Corinthians 12, 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice and that it may depart from me. And I don't want to talk you out of death, but since young, and I really say more and more so like, in my later days, you know, believing in Christ, every night I would go through sleep paralysis. Whether it be uh, I got lustful thoughts or it would just happen when I'm, I feel like I'm all the way right with the Lord. I, I, I know I used to get held down a lot of my sleep. And it wasn't until Pope, uh, um, Pastor Pope told, you know, told that sermon and basically... It's funny because the night before I was, you know, I was talking my feet with my fiance, uh, my brother Reef and his wife LA, and we was, you know, uh, my, my fiance was like, You ever ask God? Let me see. So my fiance was like, You ever ask God why these things always happen to you? I think if you fast and you ask him, he will let you know. So I'm like, to be honest with you, these things happen when I'm all the way in right standing, I feel like with God. You can never be all the way in right standing, but you understand what I'm saying. I'm not willfully doing that what I don't want to do. And, you know, so I said, to be honest, if I'm going through that, I feel like God chose me to bear that. And now who am I to question him? I'm not going to ever question God about nothing I go through. You know what I'm saying? If it is what it is, he know I'm strong enough to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? It happens and I, now I just be like, huh, it is what it is. But... I really didn't understand why this was happening. And it wasn't until the next day we went to church in Maryland and, and Pope spoke about it. And uh, I don't want y'all to misunderstand. I'm not talking about the Pope, but, it's, you know, my mentor, Pastor Pope. Uh, so he was talking about it. And he brought up that passage about, uh, you know, Corinthians. And to think about it, it was times where I really felt like I'm God's, like I'm his forerunner. Because all of this I've been through with him, don't nobody gonna know God like I know God. And you can't really tell me nothing, but you're exalting yourself above measure. And God will send, like it said here, God will send. Uh, so, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, to buffet, to quiet me, to, to make me know, you know, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it may depart from me. So, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So, you know. That's just go to say, I didn't make this video for anybody to be like, yo, William Cater, he, he a dope rapper for, for the Lord, and he got the revelations. It ain't about that. It's about Christ. Because as long as you know Christ, you don't need nothing else. So, that's my video. Hopefully, I can make more for y'all. I don't really do this. Uh, if I talked your head off, I apologize. I'm not sorry because, you know, this is what God will have me to do, and I hope.
y'all can take from this and you know it, it can make you grow and you'll be more aware but we don't fight against flesh and blood but against spiritual wickedness in high places so love y'all you already know hit that subscribe button i'm out <laughs>